Quadratic Equations, Factoring, Level 1. To factor a polynomial means to write the polynomial as a product of other polynomials, taken from a specific factor set. In this video, the factor set is a set of polynomials having integral coefficients. This factor set is going to be important because not all quadratic equations can be solved by factoring over the integers. This technique of factoring a quadratic equation is actually a shortcut and only works on specific quadratic equations, so keep this in mind. Many students assume that if you can't factor a quadratic equation, it automatically has no solution. This is completely wrong. Depending on the context, a quadratic equation will always have either real, imaginary, or complex solutions. The fact that you can't factor a quadratic equation over the integers means that factoring is not the way to proceed in searching for its solutions, and requires other techniques which we will cover in a later video. With that said, we can solve most quadratic binomials of the form ax squared plus bx equals 0 and quadratic trinomials of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 by factoring and then applying the principle of zero products. Consider the equation ab equals 0. In this equation, notice that if a is not 0, then b must be 0. Conversely, if b is not 0, then a must be 0. In other words, if we have a product of real numbers, say a and b, then their product equals 0, if and only if a equals 0 or b equals 0. The zero product property learned in Algebra 1 is the basis in solving quadratic equations of these two forms. When a quadratic equation is written with 0 as one side, you can solve the equation if you can factor the quadratic polynomial on the other side into linear factors of the form ax plus b, where a cannot equal 0. In other words, we want to factor our quadratic polynomial as a product of two linear factors of the form the quantity ax plus b times the quantity cx plus d equals 0, where a and c cannot equal 0. Then we solve the quadratic equation by setting each linear factor equal to 0. To sum up, the general procedure in solving quadratic equations by factoring is to first write the equation with 0 as one side, 2. Factor the other side of the equation, and 3. Solve the equation obtained by setting each linear factor equal to 0. In this video we are going to practice step 3, using the zero product property first, with a couple of examples. Let's try and solve the first equation. Solve the equation the quantity y plus 4 times the quantity y plus 6 equals 0. The given equation already has 0 as one side, so step 1 is done. In addition, notice that the quadratic equation is also broken up into linear factors, so that takes care of step 2. The final step is to use the zero product property by setting each linear factor equal to 0, as follows. The first equation is y plus 4 equals 0, so we subtract 4 from both sides of the equation and obtain y equals negative 4 as one solution. In the same manner, we set the second factor, y plus 6, equal to 0. Then solve for y. So we subtract 6 from both sides of the equation and obtain negative 6 as our second solution. Remember, you always end up with two solutions when solving quadratic equations. It's always a good idea to test your solutions. So let's substitute y for negative 4 and simplify. Doing that, we obtain 0 times 2, which reduces to 0. So this solution checks out. And if we substitute y for negative 6, we obtain negative 2 times 0, which simplifies to 0. And this solution also checks out. If we were to graph this quadratic equation, we would obtain the following graph. Notice that the graph passes through negative 4, 0, and negative 6, 0. These are the roots or zeros of the quadratic equation. These roots are essentially what we are solving for. Specifically, the location where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis. All right. Let's try the next equation. Solve the equation the quantity a minus 5 times the quantity a minus 2 equals 0. Like in the previous example, the quadratic equation is set equal to 0 on one side, and it's also in factored form. So we go ahead and apply the zero product property and set each linear factor equal to 0, and solve for the variable. So we set the quantity a minus 5 equal to 0, and add 5 to both sides of the equation and obtain a equals 5 as one solution. Then we go ahead and set the other factor, the quantity a minus 2 equals 0, and solve for a. So we add 2 to both sides of the equation and obtain a equals 2 as a second solution to the quadratic equation. Alright, let's try the next example. Solve the equation the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 3 equals 0. Alright, this equation is once again set equal to 0 on one side. 
and it's also in factored form. So we go ahead and apply the zero product property and set each factor equal to zero. For the first factor, we start solving for x by subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation, as follows. Doing that yields the solution x equals negative 3. Setting the second factor equal to 0 and solving in a similar fashion, we also obtain x equals negative 3 as the second solution. Notice that we ended up with two solutions that are equivalent. This is a telltale sign that we are dealing with a repeated, also known as a double or multiple root of the quadratic equation. Another way of looking at this problem is by rewriting the factors as the quantity x plus 3 squared equals 0. Then we see that this equation is actually an equation that contains a binomial square. And by now, we should be pros in solving these types of quadratic equations. After viewing the first quadratic equation videos in this series, remember, we typically solve these equations by taking the square root of both sides of the equation, then solving for x. Solving it this way yields the same answer, x equals negative 3. All right, let's try the next example. Solve the equation x times the quantity x minus 7 equals 0. This quadratic equation is already set equal to 0, so that's been taken care of. Also notice that it's written in factored form. One factor is x, and the other factor is the quantity x minus 7. So we go ahead and apply the zero product property. The first factor is x, so we set that equal to 0, which instantly gives us one solution, specifically x equals 0. Next we set the second factor equal to 0, and solve for x. So we add 7 to both sides of the equation and obtain x equals 7 as a second solution. Notice that in this quadratic equation, we obtain zero as one of our solutions. Many students forget and completely overlook this solution and move along to the factor that contains the quantity enclosed in the parentheses and end up with only one solution, completely ignoring the first factor x. Make sure you don't do the same. If we were to graph this equation, we would obtain the following graph. This function would cross the x-axis twice, once at seven zero and the origin at zero zero. All right, let's move along to the next equation. Solve the equation 3z times the quantity 2z plus 5 equals 0. Like in the previous examples, this equation is set equal to 0 and is in factored form. So we go ahead and apply the zero product property to 3z and the quantity 2z plus 5. For the first factor, we go ahead and solve for z by dividing both sides of this equation by 3. Here, 0 divided by 3 signifies to 0. Remember, 0 divided by any number is equal to 0. Many students get this confused and think it's undefined. Remember, a number is undefined when we divide a number by 0, not the other way around. So doing that, we obtain z equals 0 as one solution. Next, we set the second factor, the quantity 2z plus 5, equal to 0. So we solve this equation by first subtracting 5 from both sides of the equation. Doing that, we obtain the following. Next step is to divide 2 from both sides of the equation as follows. Doing that, we obtain the second solution, which is equal to negative 5 over 2, or negative 5 halves. Once again, notice that we had a factor that was not enclosed in a parentheses. You can actually enclose it if you want, but for the most part, we don't enclose monomials with their own parentheses. Nevertheless, it still represents multiplication, and has to be set equal to 0 when applying the zero product property. In addition, Notice that we obtain a fraction as our answer, so don't be surprised if you obtain fractions as one of your solutions, it's completely normal. Alright, let's work on the final example. Solve the equation, the quantity negative 5x minus 2 times the quantity 3 minus 9x equals 0. Alright, this equation is set equal to 0 on one side and it's also in factored form. So we apply the zero product property to each factor and solve for the variable. For the first factor, we start by adding 2 to both sides of the equation, as follows, and obtain the following. Then we divide both sides of the equation by negative 5, as follows. Then we simplify the expression and obtain negative 2 fifths as one solution. We do the same for the second factor and start solving for the variable by subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation, as follows. Then we divide both sides by negative 9. Then it's just a matter of simplifying the fraction and obtain the second solution, which is equal to 1 third. All right, and there you have it. This is the way you solve quadratic equations by factoring. Once you have your equation in factored form, it's just a matter of applying the zero product property to each factor and solve for the variable. In our next video, we will learn various techniques that will help us rewrite quadratic equations into its factored form.